Hello everyone. Welcome back to the last section of this lesson on how to show your confidence in front of your audience. In the previous section, I told you that I'll give you examples. We'll take care of that in the next lesson. Do not worry about that. Now, audience is the most important thing, one of the most important thing rather when we speak, when we are giving a lecture or when we are communicating. This audience we have seen earlier could be anyone, right? But how do you make your audience interested in your speech? How to interest your audience, meaning how to make your audience feel good about you, uh, listen to you and take an action. That is what in totality we would want to There are lots of points written here, but I'll explain you one by one all of these points. Our intent in order to show our confidence and be confident, it's not only about showing but also behaving confident or being confident from inside is because we want our audience to feel that the person that he or she is talking to or the person that they are talking to, first thing has depth, has knowledge, has interest in whatever he is saying, is able to help them take some action or is able to help them bring in more knowledge okay so if that is the intent this will only help them interested in us and or in our speech how do we go about that how do we make our audience interested in our speech especially our speech and then automatically when they are interested in our speech they become interested in us they would want to listen to us time and again they would want to come back to us for suggestions for improvements for uh, guidance advice whatever it may be but before that we will have to make them interested in our, in our speech then only they'll move forward and become interested in us the first time that we meet our audience how do we connect with them though we are going to see it in the next lessons how do we make them interested? How do we express ourselves? All these things in detail we are going to see in the next section. But in this particular section, we will only devote time in how to interest our audience. Here you see, become a good conversationalist. And in our public speaking level one, in one of the lessons we had learned that public speaking is all about conversation, communication. You are conversing with your audience. How do you do that? You talk to them. It's just not that you have memorized, and I've told you in previous sections also, minimize the memorization techniques. Minimize, memorize. Do not kind of, we, in English we say, do not vomit whatever you have learned. Try to frame your own words, frame your own sentences, irrespective of what the, whatever you have memorized, so that even if you forget something, you can bring, bring back your thoughts. Now, in your speech, if you are using conversation, which means that, the tonality of your voice, the tonality of your speech makes you sound as if you are talking to your audience, even though it's a monologue mostly, wherein you only are talking and the person sitting in front of you or watching you are more, most of the time listening to you. Still, you can have this conversationalist attitude or a tone of conversation, wherein as if you are talking to them by asking questions, by uh, putting some points and waiting for an answer, by giving some startling facts. You, all these, you do all these things and become a conversationalist. You are sharing something, you are asking something, in return of which you want a response, not in words, but in their action. So you will see, when you are a seasoned speaker and you throw some points at uh, the audience and you, want, you wait for their reactions, you see that their eyes sparkle, they have smile on their faces. That is how they give you feedback, they give you an answer, not always talking. So when you, when you use conversational tone, which means as if you are conversing, as if you are talking to them, they are interested in listening to you. And in our previous section, we had seen monotony. This also breaks monotony when you are conversing with your audience, okay? And this is very important. Talk about things, ideas, and people. In one of the lessons you've learned that what kind of speeches we have, right? So when you're talking about things, when you're talking about ideas, when you're talking about people, and more, more so when you talk about people, that is when you attract them, that is when you make them interested in you, uh, in your speech, of course in you also. So when you talk about things, let's say for example, uh, you are describing about a spaceship, okay? I'll give you an example of a conversation that I had with my daughter a couple of days ago, wherein I was seeing a video on Facebook, it's on a Facebook channel, wherein they are showing that what if 
you fall into inside Jupiter. Okay. So that is a conversation I was having with my five and a half year old daughter. And she was trying to explain me. And that's, a, it's a thing. Okay. It's a thing as in it's a planet. Jupiter is a planet. She explained me literally by visualization, by giving me description. She explained me how Jupiter looks. Okay, and then she said, M Mom, there are colors around it, right? There are, I can see these brown colors, these um, white colors. Are these, what are these colors? Are these gases? I said, yes. When you, see, when you look at the planet and uh, these are the images taken from satellite, you can see as if these are some colors, but these are actually, it's a gaseous uh, planet, right? So, when you talk about things and describe them, that makes your audience very interested when you say, okay, have you seen a planet which is gaseous in nature? It's uh, one of the biggest planets. So you're describing, you're explaining, you're using your hands to explain. So when you do all of these things, they're automatically interested and they will think through, okay, which is this planet which is uh, gaseous in nature, which has these colors, or it looks uh, very colorful, though there are only brown, shades of brown, white, yellow in the, when you see Jupiter's picture, but still you can imagine. So when you're talking about things, Okay, so we come back to spaceship. When you talk about spaceship, what all it can do, where all it can take you, audience will automatically be very, very interested. Okay, this is something new that I'm hearing. And then you describe it. You say that, okay, the spaceship can take us to any planet that has life on it or any planet that we can land on. Okay, so when you give these kind of descriptions, when you use things to uh, in your speech, you automatically attract their attention. Then ideas, and this is, one of the most important thing that you do that if you have an idea, okay, like you can say, um, I, I have come up with an idea of uh, or on landing onto the can, can we reach to sun? Okay, so idea is I will develop a space uh, suit that will help that will not burn me that will help me reach to the sun because sun is of course one of the most uh, hottest thing around us, okay? So idea is that I want to develop a space uh, suit. So when you come up with this idea and people can relate to it, of course before that you have to do audience analysis and all that, but you are making your audience interested or any small idea for that matter, like rainwater harvesting is one of the concepts, but around that can you com uh, come up with an idea, all right? Or um, an idea behind making girl child more educated. So that could be an idea. So when you talk about these kind of ideas, automatically you win your uh, audience's interest. They are interested in knowing more about what you're going to say next. And of course, when you talk about people, nothing like it, because we are all human beings and we would like to know more about people. Could be anyone small, big, doesn't matter. When you talk about Mahatma Gandhi or uh, maybe Subhash Chandra Bose or scientists like, um, or when you talk about Elon Musk, or when you're talking about um, Einstein, Edison, when you talk about these kind of, or maybe APJ Abdul Kalam for that matter, when you talk about these individuals who have achieved something in their life and have helped mankind, and since we're talking about spaceships and all that, what if I talk about um, science, Newton, what if I talk about um, when people, Neil Armstrong for that matter, landed first on the moon. So when I talk about these kind of things, uh, the, you remember what Neil Armstrong had said. So when I start with this speech, one step by a man is a giant leap by mankind. Though we'll see these things, how to open, close the converse, um, in our speech. But when I talk about these kind of people and I use certain um, quotations or I avoid monotony, my audience becomes interested. All right. So when you talk about things, ideas and people and put in a lot of information, not too much, don't over, overburden them with information, but information that they can grasp, okay? Then they will be interested in you and they will continue listening to you, okay? And this is very important. Though I have said that feed information, feed a lot of uh, data to them, but be concrete. And in one of the sections, if you remember, I had told that do not get derailed. So when you are concrete, Okay, whatever you are saying has weightage, you're not derailing, you're not swaying away or moving away from your topic, they will stick to you. Normally what happens, I have seen people, uh, not only children, but adults, when they speak, since there is no connection, visualization and no channelization of thoughts, from one thought they'll move to some other thought and then they'll never be able to come back because there's no connection, all right? So you have to be very, very concrete 
and uh, be specific to whatever you are talking. Do not move away from your main ideas and your core message. This I've already told you, data, facts and figures. Like I say that, do you know more than 50% of world's population is struggling to make their days meet or to earn a bread for themselves. So if I come up with these kind of data or you would say that it's a fact that irrespective of what we do, fear of public speaking will be there within us. How do we fight it out makes us different from a speaker who is scared of talking. So when I give these kind of facts and figures, data, put in a lot of information which are valid, of course, don't, don't give a data which is not, which is fictitious. When you come up with these things, you grab their attention. The moment you throw some data, automatically you're grabbing their attention. And then when you, when you state facts, when you give figures, you are attracting them. Like when I started with fears and phobias, I said that the number one fear that people have is speaking in front of an audience or public speaking. So when I'm saying this, I'm giving a, a data, number one fear, okay? So I am attracting them. I'm throwing a data point and then they would like to know more about this. So that is how I make my audience interested in my speech. Picture building words, which I've done already here. Let them visualize whatever and use such words so that it helps you in making them uh, visualize whatever it's an idea, thing, whatever it may be, but they can visualize it. So when I'm saying that it's a planet, which is the biggest planet, okay? It's a biggest planet and use your non-verbals also. And what if you fall inside it? Will we fall inside Jupiter? For that matter, will we ever be able to land on Jupiter? What if by any means we land on Jupiter? What happens next? So Jupiter is a planet which is made of gas. It's a collection of gas. So when I'm saying collection, gas, I'm showing my hands, Jupiter, round, I am helping them build these words, visualize these words in their mind. Okay, in one of the sections I've given an example of this broccoli, right? So when I'm making them visualize, and those were now small speeches, but here I am now, uh, I have elevated myself. Now I'm a seasoned speaker. So I will, I will be using words which describe things, which describe people. That is how they'll be able to visualize. Let's say I'm talking about um, girl child, because this is one of the most um, burning topics, or domestic violence. Let's take, for, the, for example, girl child. You will not be able to relate to domestic violence. Girl child, because we've seen that in India or in the world across, the girl child is always... Uh, taken as maybe a burden, not in all parts of the world or in all parts of India, but girl child at times are taken as burden. They are not given exposure to proper education. They are not given proper nourishment. So when you're talking about girl child and you talk about how a girl child is mistreated in, in several uh, occurrences or in, in some, some locations or in some areas of India or outside world, then make them feel that pain of a girl child. There are there are countries or there are cities and places across the, the world, especially in the southern African region, wherein a girl child is fed with a lot of milk and high uh, carb diet so that they become very fat. And that kind of, you know, because of a lot of fat that gets built inside their body, their heart squeezes, their heart, their heart starts squeezing. Then you can talk about uh, certain practices wherein the girl child or the women are made to wear these um, steel, uh, you know, wearing kind of cloths, which are made of not uh, cloth, but steel or some other or wood that compresses their body. So when you're describing this, when you're using words to describe, they can imagine, oh my God, how painful would that be for a girl child? How painful would that be for a woman? They will visualize and they will connect with you. Okay, they will be interested in knowing more. All right, so these are some of the techniques you should use in your speech if you want to make your audience interested in you. And the moment you get that feedback instantly, that interest in their eyes, that sparkle in their eyes, that smile on their face, or the sorrow or pain in their face, that is when your confidence starts more, building more. 
and when you've already become a seasoned speaker, you know that whenever I, th I throw these kind of things, these kind of techniques or strategies, my audience will be able to, I will be able to show my confidence and they'll be interested in me. Okay. So this was all about how to gain confidence on the stage in front of an audience. In the next sections or in the next lessons for that matter, we are going to deep dive because I had thrown that small thing that how do we bring in, stop monotony and bring in variance. We will look at those things. So it's all about connecting. How do you connect with your audience? But for now, just try to understand that if we have to show confidence or acquire confidence in, in front of our audience, we will first have to understand the communication um, apprehensions. Once we've understood that, we will use practice in our speech and show our confidence and ultimately break the monotony by using some variance in our speech. And finally, we are going to make our audience interested in us by following certain techniques. So I'll move you on, uh, make, uh, meet you in the other side with lots and lots of other informations. See you there.